So who else is there? Rongi. I think Rongi is a new new addition to this. Not happening. I've got it. Who are you, Rongi? This Omawa man seems lost in thought. His clothes are neat and clean, but he's tugging on the fringe of his sash, which he's worried into a long loose thread. He looks up at you, his bleary eyes suddenly sharp and alert. What well, say, you are new to Tikawara. Um, do you know anything about the missing Kuiki fruit? Only that Tamau has slept like a fat tortoise, while the rest of us chew on reeds to fool our bellies. Akara, no one could be less surprised Tamau had this coming. Uh, insightful. You don't seem particularly upset about it. Guilty or no, being tossed to the waves is what Tamau deserves. I have no tears for him. <laughs> these guys are all... I mean, Tamau is probably an asshole, but these guys are not no better. <laughs> he complained until the Ranga gave him my finest mats and then left them out for the sport of beasts. Let the gods sort him. Well, that's not good. Rongi's lips curls back, but he holds his composure steady. So even if he's innocent, you don't care. The tribe has challenges enough without Huana eating from each other's plates. You overstep for a stranger, an outsider. I say you should go back to the shore that welcomes you. Turns away and says no more. All right. We'll remember that. <laughs> we'll remember that. Rongi. And there's Vector again. Right. The Koiki fruit. Mukumu, we, could, this. we could tell him. Yes, hello. Whatever you need, I can help. Well, Pega was lying. Tamau didn't steal the Koiki. We, we cannot let this. I mean, we were a slave. We feel akin to this guy. But say, Pego speaks through a false blowhole? Prove it. Show me the real traitor. I don't have any hard evidence yet. Do not waste my time, I say. Um, yeah. You waste time instead of looking for the fruit, my good man. Could go to the hut. Let's hide from the rain. I, I really love the weather effects that are coming now. Who are you guys? Ngeme and Wihata. What does Rongi go out to the beach in the middle of the night? Aha, Rongi is restless, I say. I say he has taken the quiffy, quiki fruit. There's the goddess, you've got to see this. Statue de depicts a voluptuous woman with the head of an anglerfish. The paint is thick as if freshly applied. That's the goddess. To love such a goddess, right? Because you have no choice, otherwise you, she will eat your head. <laughs> Probably. She looks like it. Let's go to the shrine. Come with Rawatai's Amada. Whom do we have here? If Nairi. We shall talk to her. Watch and learn. It's like a small older version of the statue outside. The wood is smooth and mottled with water damage. Considering hey there, Nairi. The moon is young, but her serious matter makes her look much older. More outlanders. Are your masters so desperate that they send you to plunder a starving village? Do I look like an outsider, really? Excuse me. <laughs> No, we're going to be diplomatic. I think we've got off the wrong foot. Foot Adonan, captain of the Defiant. What do you say this to impress me? You are no different from the last ones who came through. Adonan does conquer us with ink and paper pacts as well as blades. They conquer us all the same. Well, uh, don't give us this. I mean, we're Stoics and. We are stoic, but we'll say this. So learn to fight or read the fine print. Either will do. Aranga gave me the chance. She grits her teeth. 
Ruano collaborates with the bottom feeders who went to Pokokuhara for Ardra riches. I warned the Valians about Pokokuhara, but why listen to the ignorant Huana girl? Now I remain, and they are gone, taken by the curse. Hmm. Valians are some of the most skilled navigators in the world. They just don't they don't just go missing. Pokokuhara was not for them. With Magati's aid, the sea takes and gives in equal measure. Dark clouds surround Pokokohara, and in my dreams they swallow us all. Oh. The more I hear about this Pokokohara, the more entrancing it sounds. A broad smile crosses her features for the first time since you begin talking. Maybe you want to cause trouble for the Valian Zekara? Or just to topple something large? If you go to Pokokohara, I say the best thing is to destroy it for the tribe. When the Adra is gone, the Valians will dig somewhere else, leaving us to point our canoes toward more welcoming shores. Hmm. Maybe that wouldn't be a bad choice. Mm. Ah, that's an Adra pillar. Hmm. Ah, I will consider it. I hope so. And did we speak of this, Ekara? <laughs> we did not speak of this, Ekara, I mean. I hear that Anaharu also had problems with the outsiders. She winces as you speak the name. One hand strays to the Coral Crescent Pendant. She loved him, probably. She forces his back down, pinning her hand beneath her folded arms. Anaharu was the tribe's priest before me, and he was my fa Oh, he was her father, before he challenged Ruanu to a trial of waves. He was cast off. We are forbidden to speak of him. What was that trial of waves? When there is an argument between leaders that cannot be answered, we turn to Ngati, the goddess. To challenge us risk violent currents, beasts from the deep. I, I think it's a trickster goddess. I'm, I'm not sure if it's this, this goddess. Beasts from the deep and waves that would dash them against the rocks. The winner, if there's one, has Ngati's favor. Yeah, it's her. The loser, living or dead, is forgotten by Ngati and the tribe. Why did your father challenge Ruanu to a trial of waves? My father knew the traders are as, as dangerous as pirates and slavers, perhaps more, because they grow strong in Nekataka. So when the expedition came, he begged Ruanu to send them away and move the tribe to another island. Ruanu, he did not listen, and Anaharu was done talking. Mm, I see. Anaharu goes to his next life, but forgotten. He goes to a different tribe. She hangs her head. Uh, you don't seem to think much of Ruanu's leadership. He's our Ranga. My own great aunt looked into his soul and declared him such. Must respect him, even as he builds a village for our enemies. Hmm. Have you tried reasoning with him? I have, and so did Anna. She breaks off, looking down and frowning. Anaharu, I must learn to stop saying his name. Are you the priestess of this tribe now? She nods, one finger brushing the crescent pendant at her neck. We worship the same gods as the foreigners, sometimes with different names. This is Ngati, the trickster of the seas. Foreigners know her as Ondra. To us, there is no difference. Oh yeah, Ondra, the goddess of forgetting. Not happening. A previous playthrough of the of, uh, Pillars of Eternity One, we we had problems with Ondra, <laughs> a lot of problems. Yeah. Hmm. What to do now? Look around. The Chieftain's Hut. That would be interesting, right? And the Communal Storage Hut. Well, maybe let's go there. To the Communal Storage. That's the world. We don't know much about the world. Yet, at least. Did you come with the Ru Rowatize Armada? Oh, yeah. Sitting there and... Storage, we cannot access it. 
Now let's go to the chieftain then. Ah, welcome to Tikawara. Now Awa huddles in close conversation with the warriors next to him. He whispers in a low, stern voice. No sooner do you catch his eye than he grins wide enough to stretch every muscle in his face. Ekara, what would a surprise, I say, but no one told me that envoys of Rawatai landed on Tikawara. His congenial smile wavers as he swallows down a lump in his throat. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, should we be diplomatic? Well, we could be, right? Not always stoic. Adonan, captain of the Defined, at your service. I would shower you with the fruit of our harvest, but the season is unkind, I say. Poor Kohara is restless. Even from afar, the storms tear our bounty up by the root and chase fifth fish to calmer shores. We know what Poco Kohara is, so... um. But in general, this doesn't look so bad off. Ekara, but the land is stubborn, and Ngati... Sheds her tears to the east. The Valians went to Pokokohara for luminous Adra, but their expedition does not return. As the storms grow wild, Tikawara dies around us. No traveller will land here if they are forced to eat their belts, I say. Hmm. I've got some history with old places that cause storms. I'll take a look. His eyes widen a little. The smile that creases his face seems for a moment genuine. Here, this was a token passed down from the Rangas, said to come from Pokokohara in brighter days. He passes you a heavy length of copper, shaped in a spiral. <gasps> mm. Thank you. Ruanu? Mm, no, he's just, just giving us, and we're doing him a service, so say nothing. If you need aid, and we, his warriors, need only someone to bark the commands, and they will go. Hmm. Maybe he seems to have a chip on her shoulder. He sighs and rubs his forehead. She's our priestess, but she is new to her duties. She did not mention Anaharu. Um, oh, it didn't come up. This is good. He breathes a sigh of relief. Better not to voice certain things, Ekara. Nairi has suffered enough, I say. Yeah, we're lying here, but for good reason. You don't want to get her into trouble. Mm. You don't seem to mind the Valian influence. Some tribes push the foreigners away, but it is good to have powerful friends. If the Valians come, they will build an outpost here in Tikawara. Then we will have n more to trade with outsiders than just Rongi's mats. With coin comes protection and friendship. Favorable arrangement for both sides, I say. Are you always this friendly? I say that in Tikawara there is always a spot around the fire and... Gurgle reverberates from the stomach of the guard standing next to Ruanu. He grimaces and places his hands over his belly. As if to muffle the sound, the Ranga shoots him a withering glare. And a koiki in every hand. When he turns back to you, he's all white smiles and pleasantries again. Oh, Where could I find supplies? The Valians left many crates with the dwarf. He holds them by the beach. But, um, but we never refuse a guest. If you need sleep, he will show you all the villagers contending for the honor of your visit. If you need strong Mataru warriors to fight at your side, then Himuihi can help you with this also. She guards the trading post. Tell me about the tribe. Our village here is young still, but will grow when the Valians come. That is f for what we build many houses now, even a trading post. We make Tikabara pleasing to the Valians. Then when they come from Pokokohara, they build their harbor here. They must, he clears his throat. Questions about that. Wind and sorrow are all that emerge from the ruins. Never answers. He waves you on. Ah, oh, beyond the storms, is there any danger? Ekara, we paddle our canoes the long way around Pokokuara for a reason, I say. Other people and other people lived among our ancestors and built a temple in the desert. Now there's only death. The Valians closed their ears to my warning. 
Ooh, ooh. Why not move the tribe elsewhere? In our old villages, we were raided by pirates, stolen by slavers, and killed by Rower Tyan's cats. Right, he's got a point. So I brought them here. But the soil is too poor for koiki fruit, and the water is too shallow for great fish. At least we are in the path of valiant traders. As they come and go, this is protection, prosperity, a future. Back to my other, other questions, and uh, farewell. So these guys are leaving now. Got it. And what is that? The wood is smooth under your hand. This totem looks to have been carved and painted recently. Can we take something here? We can unlock this. Mechanics, eh? There, done. Away from there, outsider. Mm. Ah, ah, come on. I just wanted to pick the lock. I didn't want to open it. But we've gained an item. <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's leave then. <laughs> oh my god, lost reputation. <laughs> Ah, so that doesn't work anymore. Just opening them. Well then. Mm -hmm. Well then. But what did we get? A copper Muzuma shell key. A key. Hmm. Let's look at the hut though. We'll travel around here. Let's make a short pause to Sunipu Beach.